today we are talking about Industry 4.0. And I thought before we got into some of the tools and capabilities that we're starting to see out there in the marketplace and at client sites, that we would take just a couple minutes to level set and get a common understanding of, of what it is that we're talking about here when we say that term. Digital transformation. We hear that term everywhere these days. Many articles in industry publications discuss what this means and it's become kind of a buzzword and it's been around for some time, but it's probably still a term worth taking a quick look at. As we guide organizations on their journey to business process transformation, our focus is on how enterprise information systems enable that broader digital transformation for companies within the sectors that we serve. Ultra sees digital transformation as aligning investments in technology, business models, and processes to drive value for their customers and employees and more effectively compete in their economies and markets. So that's kind of our definition of it. You know, there's a lot of ways to go about it. We see clients moving their shop floors to completely paperless and, and electronic environments, electronic workflows, uh, moving things to the back office in a seamless fashion, the whole concept of lights out manufacturing and automation, predictive maintenance, sensors, going out on consumer products that are providing feedback to manufacturers. These are just some areas that we see. So industry 4.0 has been referred to frequently as the fourth industrial revolution. And we hear that term quite a bit these days. The concept of industry 4.0, I think, is more than just a trend or a buzzword out in the marketplace. As its name implies, many people would tell you that it is considered to be effectively just that, which is the fourth industrial revolution. It's really the culmination of automation, big data, cloud computing, and connected devices that are enabling this new era in manufacturing and industry. So with each of these different areas maturing in their own right, it's where they all collide that's making this so exciting for everything. And as with most transformations in industry, obviously it's not going to happen overnight, especially most manufacturers that we see are adopting components of these areas. They're growing in each of them. And then together, it's starting to really change the way business is running. We are starting to already see some of this with our more sophisticated or complex manufacturers that are out there. Part of what's enabling all of this is the industrial internet of things or IIoT, if you've seen it. And that really refers to the ability to connect machines to the internet, to one another, and to larger business systems. They aren't machines that are necessarily meant to speak with these applications, but because of the connected nature of technology these days, they're able to communicate directly with applications. Applications and the cloud computing power that they have now are allowing them to consume external data from outside of the application itself. It used to be that machines use PLCs to report data to an MES system, but that's kind of changed. Now we're finding that machines of almost any type can be fitted with some type of sensors or you know, some type of data input that they're collecting and transmit that to almost any application or another machine for that matter for consumption. The Internet of Things is effectively the network of physical devices, vehicles, home appliances, machines, anything and everything that are embedded with electronics, software, sensors, enabling the connectivity across them, which ultimately is making these things able to connect and exchange data back and forth, which creates opportunities for more direct integration to the physical world world and into computer systems, which, like I said, results in efficiency improvements, economic benefits, reduced human effort. The number of IoT devices increased 31% year over year to 8.4 billion just in 2017. It's continuing to grow further. And it's estimated that there's going to be about 30 billion devices on the IoT network by 2020. The global market value of IoT is projected to reach 7.1 trillion by next year. Again, IoT involves extending the internet connectivity beyond standard devices like desktop and laptops to any range of traditionally non-internet enabled or dumb devices, machines on the shop floor, a forklift as it goes through a doorway, any number of things can be connected. Which brings us to the concept of sensors. I mentioned that in the past there was a notion on, on a shop floor of a manufacturing tool with a PLC that might provide some information on cycles or pressure or something like that back to a manufacturing execution system. And they're very tightly integrated and they worked exclusively together. But what we're seeing today is is that sensors can be applied to just about anything and everything that, that's out there. The cost of producing very small sensors for different things has come down dramatically, and it's allowed us to retrofit all sorts of machines and equipment, devices. Basically, if you can think of it, you could connect it in some form or fashion to the Internet of Things. They're much cheaper, they're reliable, and like I said, they're out there capturing cycle times, units, pressure, effectively any data point that you can conceive of. There's some type of cheap, simple sensor out there that can be applied that can feed that that information back. In many cases, what we see is just
just like the PLCs of the past, they're reporting production or some other metric in real time as it's happening. But as you can imagine, with so many data points, the industrial internet of things and high-speed connectivity, that they're enabling plant floors and shops to have a whole new wealth of information. It's great. They produce a ton of data. The challenge in some cases for organizations collecting that is how do I turn this mountain of data into some kind of actionable intelligence so that I can make better real-time business decisions. We've seen in some cases clients rolling out what we call control towers where we're effectively monitoring the business in real time across all sorts of different areas. So it's more than just production and say an MES or shop floor tool. They may be watching the path of you know international shipments on the water in real time via small GPS sensors. They're monitoring receipts of product and real time put away as things are tagged with RFIDs and being automatically flagged on the shop floor as they're put away or moved into the warehouse. So that concept of the control tower is effectively bringing all that together and allowing them to, just like an air traffic control tower, take a look at everything and monitor the full view of what's going on in their business.